888-727-BECK, 888-727-BECK. Um, I will tell you, the, um, um, the, um, there will be more stories like the last one to follow. There is a, um, there is a reason I told you last um, September that Tea Party members, those who do not, those who hold feet to the fire of the Republicans, your days are numbered. They are going to do everything they can to destroy you. There is a reason why I told you that. I don't care to share it with you now. Just believe me that it is true. You have outgrown your usefulness to the Republican Party. You were not a Republican um, uh, shill. I am not a Republican shill. And now they are doing their best to destroy you because an election is coming up. And if you don't like... Mm, who's it going to be? Mitt Romney? In the end, probably Mitt Romney, because he's the guy who's played the game the whole time. Maybe in the end, Mitt Romney's the best guy. I don't know. But who's played the game with the Republican Party? If you don't, and, and look, I want Obama out of office just as much as the next guy. But the Republican Party is just as bad When it comes to, it'll be their way or the highway. Remember, it takes two to dance. It takes two to play this game, to get our country in this state. It doesn't just happen with one side. It takes two. It takes the people like Lindsey Graham and John McCain to compromise us into oblivion. John McCain is clearly a big government progressive. His favorite president is Theodore Roosevelt. Read the words of Theodore Roosevelt. By the way, started the Progressive Party. Left the Republicans. That was the problem. They learned their lesson. No, no, no. Don't become a separate party. Just fold yourself into both parties and don't give anybody a choice. That's why it feels like when you go to the voting booth, you don't have a choice. And you know why you don't have a choice? Because the media is right along with it. I'm not a Council of Foreign Relations conspiracy guy, because that's just a group of people. I don't even think they even know what they're, I don't even think they even know their original charter anymore. But that was a group started by the progressives under Woodrow Wilson. What was it? It was to bring the reporters in with the leaders of the world, the progressive leaders in Congress and the progressive leaders in industry, and teach them so they could then teach the the American people what had to be done. That's where we started looking down at the American people. And that's why you don't feel like there's a choice ever. Why you keep getting the same group of people. Because you are. You are. Do you remember when I came back from the White House after meeting with Bush and I said the scariest thing? The scariest thing. Any, any, I, I, this is like a movie line. Barack Obama had just said that he was going to fly fighter jets over the Pakistani border if he was elected. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. And that was the day that I went to the White House and I asked the president. I said, Mr. President, what? I mean, he said, don't worry. You sit in this chair you realize the American president doesn't really have any choices. He'll make the same decisions that I'm making. Hmm. That scared the living hell out of me. Interestingly, though, that's proven to be the case. Exactly. That's really proven out. He's, he's done exactly he was the same thing. going to get us out of Iraq. He was going to get us out of Af- Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. He's done neither. In fact, he got us into a third war in Libya. Mm-hmm. He he's made the same he's choices only, as Bush, and he did not close Gitmo. He's done all. He, he's done everything. He's done the exact he's, opposite of everything he said he'd do as far as the wars are concerned. Accelerated. Yeah, he has. He is accelerated. Yeah. He has made the Department of Homeland Security more spooky. Yeah. Yeah. And where are the cries of? Oh, the what about the wordless wiretapping? Wordless wiretapping is still going on. Still going on. Where's the cries? Where's the outrage? Where's the, hey, Barack Obama's taking our freedom from us? We used to hear that with Bush every day. 
Remember that? Every day. Every day. Every day. Now they couldn't care less because it's it's their party doing it. Listen, um, I don't really care what the Republicans do. Um, I don't really care what uh, Congress does. Uh, I don't I don't really have much faith in um, uh, very many people that are in, high in both parties. I don't think you do either. It's the American people that are going to turn the people that are going to turn around. And it is the that in the end choose. We choose. Do we stand with Israel or not? I want you to sign up for GBTV.com right now. Sign up at GBTV.com. Make a commitment. Four nights with me next week on GBTV, live from Israel. Congress can't be there. You can. GBTV.com. Sign up right now. members of the Knesset today here in Israel, and um, uh, they, are, they are quite um, worried about what is coming their way, as I am. Um, maybe nothing, but as I left that meeting, um, um, there was a terrorist attack. In fact, there were five terrorist attacks today, um, just on the um, southern border of Israel, right by, um, right by Egypt. Israel is going to respond, it looks like, at this point. Um, they are so measured um, and so in control of themselves, um, but they will be, again, blamed for more. It is in, we're now in Ramadan, which Hamas has said, if you strike us during Ramadan, well, then all holy hell will break loose. Uh, you know, they use anything um, for an excuse. Um, I, you know, I don't, I, I don't, I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, that they, uh, they are like we are. You're not going to strike unless you have evidence that it is them, because uh, it could be Egypt. Uh, it just shows that Egypt is no longer in control of the border, and things are tough here. We just told you about um, uh, what's happening in Washington with a congressman not being approved um, to go, and they're saying that, you know, the... the um, Twice it was rejected uh, to be able to come here. Um, uh, then they were told, well, if you get private funding, uh, which is totally understandable, then you can, then you can go. The congressman, they got the private funding, and uh, then it was rejected again. And the exact quote, and I want to read it to you verbatim, is um, the Glenn Beck events are not something the congressman should attend in office capacity based on the conflict of interest for him as a member. I'm not I'm not really sure what that what that means or how I'm a, a conflict or the message is a conflict of stand with our ally. Stand with our ally. Uh, I ask you to join us. It begins on Sunday. There are four nights. The big event is on Wednesday. The first event is Sunday. Join now at GBTV.com. Please join us for this. Uh, let me go to Luke in Vancouver, British Columbia. Hello, Luke. Welcome to the Glenn Beck Program. Thanks for taking my call. I wanted to talk to you about that Ron Bloom story. Yes. There's something that I think is actually giving Politico too much credit. In what way? Unlike, uh, well, Pat, Pat was saying that how they don't do any digging, right? There's... But the article said that Ron Bloom was evoking China. Mm -hmm. They dug it up. Right. They knew what that quote was from, or they wouldn't have been able to say evoke China. That's true. That's true. Very it's true. Not, That's true. In case, That's hang on just point. a second. In case you don't know what he's talking about, if you remember Ron Bloom, he's the guy that said this. Uh, generally speaking, we get the joke. Uh, we know that the free market is nonsense. We know that the whole point is to game the system to beat the market, or at least find someone who will pay you a lot of money because they're convinced that there is a free lunch. We know this is largely about power, that it's an adults-only, no-limit game. We kind of agree with Mao that political power comes largely from the barrel of a gun. Okay. So you've heard that a million times we've played it. He then went and testified in front of Congress that that was a joke, that that was a jokey speech, and that's all he was doing there was joking. There wasn't a laugh in the entire speech. <laughs> that part, there's nobody's laughing. 
Nobody's laughing. The worst comedy routine you've ever heard in your <laughs> life. So then if you look at this, it's on the front page of, uh, of The Blaze. We broke a story that Politico hinted at, but we're a little more curious, apparently. And Yeah, I uh, want to thank you for the hat tip on the bottom, too, there. Uh, pardon me? For the hat tip? I'm the tipster. I'm the watchdog who submitted the story in the first place. Oh, you great. are so the best. The you bottom. are the best. Nice job. Okay, so um, it, it, he says, Ron Bloom and leaving the White House. Pat, read the quote. Uh, let's He's talking see. about how do we, you know, how, what's the best way to, to repair manufacturing jobs here in America? What, what, what can we do? And he says this. Let the great thousand flowers bloom in America. Let the great thousand flowers bloom in America? Well, that's... Mm-hmm. A bizarre and political called it uh, uh, invoking China. Invoking China. Yeah, invoking China. So you're right. They had to have known. It actually came not just from China. It came from Chairman Mao. And, and the and the Mao exactly. quote and the Mao quote is uh, is from a campaign, the Hundred Flowers campaign, where he invited his opposition to come forward and tell him what was wrong with China, which they did, and then they were summarily executed if Mao didn't like what they had to say. So it's, a, it's an amazing... Of a gun. That's, yeah. a, that's amazing, isn't it? It's an amazing quote to use in America when you know the history of it, and of course so, he does. So, Luke, what is your... I mean, let's give, uh, you know, uh, let's give everybody the benefit of the doubt. Can you think of an innocent way that, that, is be, that that's being used? I've been trying all day, and I called in yesterday, too, uh, and I, I can't think of a way that that could be seen. Mm-hmm. Besides protecting the administration, I can't really see how that could be done, because they looked it up. They clearly know the background of the quota. They wouldn't have been able to say he was evoking China. Right, and there's no way that Ron Bloom uses that, unless this is another comedy routine. <laughs> there's there's <laughs> no way that Ron Bloom uses that. Because you would never, that, that would be like somebody getting on and saying, first of all, you know, we generally agree with Hitler. And there we go, wait, wait, what do you, what did you do, what? Huh? And then him saying, oh, you know what, with no laughs, that was just a joke. Okay. Then the guy comes back and says, you know what, you know, it'd be really great for powers. Just slip some guys in so they don't see you coming. And then all we need is a Reichstag moment. There's no way you would, hmm. what are you talking about? There's no way, if you know the Reichstag moment, you know what that means. The same thing. If you know the thousand flower quote, you know that that was luring people out, getting them to show themselves, and then execute them all. This oh, is yeah, crazy. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, I, I the I double really standard is. I how after you get burned, you do it again. Like, he already got burned once for quoting Mao. <laughs> he he agreed with Mao. Well, okay. It's the again. arrogance. Like, I, the I, arrogance. Okay, so wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe let, let's just ta- let's just again. I'm just playing devil's advocate, and I m- truly mean devil's advocate. Um, uh, let's just say that he was like, "I'm just going to screw with the press one more time." On the way out, I'm just going to screw with the guys on the right one more time. Watch this. Maybe that doesn't Maybe. excuse Politico. No. Oh, no I, I mean, I don't believe it, but it doesn't excuse. Who wrote the story in Politico? Mm. We should get him on the phone. I don't know. Let's see if we can get uh, the guys from... uh, Josh Boak. Josh Boak? I love Josh Boak and all of his orchestra. He is so good. He's just incredible. He is really, really... mm. Just incredible. He's Mm -hmm. H.O.T. We'll see if we can get him on the phone. Luke, thank you very much for your phone call.